Hello and welcome to tutorial number seven. In this tutorial we're going to take the library that we created in tutorial number six and actually use that library. Now if you go over to my GitHub page you can look at all the uh, code for this UAG2 tutorial. So this is the page here and these are the files with code in them so we've got blocking animations from the blocking animation tutorial which was tutorial number four non-blocking class which was tutorial number five and then pl library that stands for part library which we created in tutorial number six so this is the library class, this is a full version of the library and if you want to use this then there's uh, instructions on how to install it here and we also have a library reference that tells you all the methods and functions that you can use as part of this library and then this library also has lots of examples here so these are the examples for this library for the full library and how you can use that. Um, however, because this is a tutorial linked to the other tutorials, what we're going to do is have a look at how to use the PL library. So if you click on PL library and click on examples and the sample exam simple example, um, this is the INO file and this is the code that I'm going to talk you through now. So I'm just going to copy and paste all of this code into Arduino IDE and we'll discuss what it all does. So. There we go, I've copied and pasted it from the GitHub page into Arduino IDE and this is what we have. So at the top we have uh, just some comments that I've put down there telling you what this code is doing. And remember this code will need to be run on a microcontroller with uh, at, least, at least 8 kilobytes of RAM because everything's stored in RAM. So an Arduino Nano version 3 won't work there's not enough ram on there so you're going to need to use something like a teensy 3.2 a teensy 3.1 or one of the newer arduino nano so for instance the arduino nano 33l uh, 33 iot or the arduino nano ble or even the arduino nano every something like that with more than eight kilobytes of ram so this is the code so some of it will look familiar to you from the previous tutorials and some of it won't so if we have a look at this on line 16 so that's the include statement and it's just telling us to include the leet pl animation library so we're importing the library there and if you haven't already done this we installed the library in tutorial 6 didn't we so you should have the library already installed if you haven't got it installed go and look at tutorial 6 look at the end towards the end of tutorial 6 and you should you should see that so if I go into YouTube now and we have a little look at that library so tutorial number six is this one um, and it was quite a, a short tutorial 10 minutes and if we go all the way to the end here this is us installing the library so if you're un unsure on how to install this library view that tutorial and it should clear that up for you so yeah on line 16 we include the library which is important the library then we include the uhg2 library which we've seen in the previous tutorials we then create a screen objects called full screen using a hardware i squared c and then we have our icon so this is icon one um or, or sprites whatever you want to call them um, it is the bird running across screen and we've got frame one frame two frame three and frame four and then we have our dragon flying across the screen and we have seven frames there and then we have the ground and we just have one frame for the ground because the ground is static and it doesn't move and then we come into creating our elite pl animation objects and what we're we going to do here we're going to create three objects a bird object a dragon object and the ground object 
Okay, so this is where it differs from the previous tutorials because we're now using a library and we're using object orientated principles. All we need to do is to create the three objects with their constructors. So as you can remember the constructors, when we're creating the objects, we need to give the Lee animation library some arguments and those arguments are the width of the sprites, the height of the sprites, the frame delay, so that's how long it's going to take in milliseconds between displaying a new frame on screen, the x increment and the y increment, that's how much we should move in pixels in the y and x directions per loop iteration of the uh, of the main program loop, um, x start position, x end position, y start position, y end position and how many frames we have in the animation and we do that for all three animation objects the bird the dragon and the ground you may notice that the ground only has one frame there that's because we only have one frame in there so we just put the, the number one rather than using a frames variable and then we do what we've done in the previous tutorials we create a we tell the uh, auxiliary screen to begin we then set the bitmap mode to one so the icons are transparent we then start the serial port and we print something just saying any class started so we know that our microcontroller hasn't crashed. And once we've done that, we then go into the main program loop. So this is what we're doing. This program loop will be uh, iterated through every one millisecond, half a millisecond, depending how fast your microcontroller is running. But this loop will be iterated through constantly while your microcontroller is running. And what we're doing here is on line 422, we're calling the check animation function. The check animation function will check the animation. Um, so that will decide whether or not to increment the X and the Y axis, and it will also choose whether or not to increment to the next frame. If it chooses to do so, then it will choose to do so. We also have an argument here that's for, for the bird animation or for the bird object, so it's set to true. That's telling us that we want to move the bird animation in accordance with the Y increment, the X increment, the X start, X end, Y start and Y end parameters that we gave to the object upon creation. If we give the argument false, it means that we don't want to move the animation when the animation stays stationary. We then clear the buffer for the auxiliary screen to make sure that we don't have any artifacts from drawing each sprite onto the screen and then we actually draw the XBMs onto the screen but the way we draw the XBMs onto the screen we call the objects and we get the values from the objects so for instance we use a bird object so we're saying bird dot get X position bird dot get Y position now they are methods within the the uh, animation class that we're calling to get the X and the Y positions because if you remember the animation class is what tracks the X and the Y position. We also store the width and the height within the animation class. So we also get the width and the height from the animation class. And then the third thing that the animation class is doing is it's keeping track of the current frame. So we're then asking the bird animation to get the next frame or get the current frame um, in order to display and give us an illusion of an animation on screen. And we do that with all of our animation objects so both with the bird the dragon and the ground the only difference is with the ground we don't call get current frame for the ground object we just say frame zero because we only have one frame in the animation and then once all of that is done we then send all that data to the screen buffer and we write it to the screen so with this it doesn't matter if we're writing three sprites to the screen or 300 sprites to the screen as long as we've got enough memory it'll always take the same amount of time to send it to the buffer which in our case is about 35 milliseconds because of the i squared c protocol now i hope that makes sense for you and i hope you can see that this code is easier to read than the code with the class inside Arduino IDE. So instead of having, so previously, so previously we had the class with inside Arduino IDE. So that's the header file for the class. And then this is the actual code for the class. Uh, we had that all inside Arduino IDE. Now, because we've imported the class, 
we have now hidden all of that code all this code here all the class code is now hidden and replaced with this one line of code which is your include statement and we create the objects down here and we iterate through them within the loop now if you download the actual the proper library not this library the, the, the library so if you go into my github page and you go into the library folder download and install this library and it will show up in your Arduino IDE as leet anima underscore animation and click on examples you've got all these examples now all these examples show you how to animate various objects differently so for instance we uh, I show you how to use while loops while doing the animations um, and by using while loops we can then create a blocking animation or we can have if you've got multiple animation you can have one animation blocking and the other ones not or you can just choose to play one animation once um, it's totally up to you but there's lots of different things you can do with the library it's quite a good library so we've got a while loop here as you can see in fact in this case this animation will play and then this animation will play and then this animation will play and then this animation will play and that will loop forever because they're both being reset at the same time but if we didn't reset them both, if we didn't reset the bird animation here, then the bird animation will just play once, for instance, and then the dragon animation will loop forever. And if you want to know more about that, have a look at the examples that I've got for the Leet animation library and have a read on the GitHub page of the library reference which is down here the library reference have a read of this and it'll explain all of these different methods you can use um, in order to get the type of animation you want so i hope you found this tutorial useful and i hope you can now see how this animation library can be useful i use it for animations in these tutorials but it could actually be used for many different things it could be used to to keep track of various objects on a screen you don't need to use it um, to animate objects in the next tutorial which will be the last tutorial of this tutorial series um, I'm going to show you how to store the icons within program memory um, and I'll go through the new methods that I've added to the animation library as well to show you how you can use them so this is progmen here so progmem so for instance with these examples here all of these icons will be stored in your program memory rather than your ram which will make the program run more efficient and save some of that valuable ram